Transport issue of climate change in the 21st century has resulted in a mounting demand for the innovation of renewable sources of energy. One such source is that of wind power, an ever growing industry whose annual global production has increased by over 430% in the last nine years. In light of this, as part of our second year aeronautics at Imperial College London, we, Group 14, are tasked with designing and engineering a small scale wind turbine. This video will outline the process we undertook throughout the course of this project. To begin with, the design of our wind turbine is limited by a number of constraints. Aside from these requirements, a large amount of encouragement was placed on design to be original and, if possible, incorporate bio-inspired features into the blade. In essence, we focused on simplicity, such as maximising turbine diameter to obtain more power at a given TSR, where the TSR is defined as the angular velocity of the blade divided by the instant airspeed. With simplicity being key, but not overly, we aim to keep this goal in mind for the duration of this project. In order to consider the aerodynamic forces acting on the blade, we had to first think about two major theories for the chord distribution, Betts and Schmitt's. It was found that Schmitt's theory better modelled the optimal chord length at the root, allowing us to also round the blade onto the spinnaker. The chosen spinner cone design was Von Karman, which is part of the Hack series of nose cone. It has the minimum coefficient of drag for a given length and diameter, meaning that airflow downstream is affected the least and improved the efficiency of the blade. Based on research of wind turbines, we discovered most blades were composed of three airfoils, a boot, a prime and a tip. We decided to research a vast amount of airfoils suited to a turbine blade and eventually reduced it to a short list where we decided to go for the following airfoils. This decision was based on optimising the ratio of lift and drag coefficients for the testing Renault pump and it being at relatively the same optimal angle of attack for the three sections. This was necessary, necessary to ensure a smooth 3D print. After considering the optimised cord length distribution along the blade, we found this relationship and deduced that the step change in cord length was too large between the root and the prime sections to round off on queer or sanding, and so the root airfoil was removed and just two sections were used. When investigating the radial velocity distribution relative to the blade, it was found that it increased towards the tip. This results in a greater angle of attack experienced by the blade moving radially along. In order to maintain the optimal angle of attack, which was about 7.5 degrees for each section, twisting of the blade was required. Schmidt's theory was used for the twist distribution. From this, the lift and drag force distributions can be calculated and the net force evaluated in the directions parallel and perpendicular to the wind. So now having obtained the force distributions parallel and perpendicular to the blade, we were then able to analyse the stress and bending moment distributions throughout the beam. Using simple beam theory, this allowed us to work out the bending moment distribution, which in turn can be used to obtain the blade deflection as a function of the spine. By splitting the beam into a thousand sections, we further modelled small chunks of the beam as individual mass spring systems, whereby each incremental mass oscillates in the rod. Carrying out this analysis enabled us to estimate the natural frequency of the blade, which was very close to the Q-blade approximation. This model also allowed us to observe the deflection of the blade with time. With ABS plastic being used, we had to ensure that the stress at any point along the span would not exceed the ABS yield stress. By analysing the centrifugal stress along the span of the blade, the calculation showed that it would not fail at the maximum required wind speed and RPM requirements. Overall, the blade design was an iterative process, combining and attempting to optimise aerodynamic and structural considerations. Action. An emphasis was placed on bio aspiration this year. Our design fulfilled this criteria in an innovative way. We looked to material choice and manufacturing process for a creative team and challenge. We gained inspiration from the hollow bones that allowed birds to fly and the very strong and stiff materials derived from plants. In the real world, 3D printed parts are nearly never printed completely solid. The mechanical property advantages are minimal when compared to 50% solid, which is therefore wasteful in both material and print time. It is of great importance to study the effect of blade density on performance, but also on the print time. In a world with mounting environmental pressures, there is a need to use materials which are renewable and biodegradable. These materials come with different mechanical properties and an understanding of the effect of these properties on 
component performance needs to be obtained. We printed out two different densities of PLA at the Imperial Hackspace, where we developed our bio turbines. This was done by keeping a shell thickness of 2mm but printing one turbine at 20% info and another at 50% in full, so to compare the two. Unfortunately, due to printing constraints, the bio turbines had to be printed in two ports, then glued together, and had to be 10% smaller than the ABS printed turbine. It was found that the denser blade produced one more watt of power at 12 meters per second. This gain in power is minimal, but it's most likely due to the blade having a greater moment of inertia. Again, due to the print constraints, the ABS was not compared to PLA. However, as the PLA blade survived testing, it can be said that the PLA is a viable material for the turbine blade. These are only preliminary results, and if time allowed, more testing would be of interest. Printing the PLA at 100% infill would be interesting as the print time was 23 hours 15 minutes, so a better understanding of the print time slash material cost versus max CPU could be gained. Also, testing the ABS turbine with 100% infill, which is the same size as the bio turbine, would allow for a direct comparison between ABS and PLA. Next, we have to bring the mathematical and bias part design to life using Creo. So in order to make the blade, we discretized the blade in 40 cross sections, which meant we had 35 steps for the primary airfoil and the remaining ones for the tip. Looking at the blade, it was quite clear that there would be lots of resin at the tip. So we investigated the possibility of incorporating rate or rounded blade tips to reduce drag. This is the seven regions, as shown in the diagram. However, due to lack of mathematical proof for the use of this in this particular application, we opted for aspect tips, which can be seen in the final design. Often is that was in Creo to help with manufacturing, manufacture, and the blade frequently did. We had a surface which is like sanding and wet and dry paper to reduce dry, and coating the blade next to for a smooth finish. Cube blade uses blade element theory, which discretizes the blade into various sections where the forces on the blade are considered and a balance of axial and angular momentum supply. This results in a set of non linear equations which cube blade solve for each section to predict the performance of the overall blade. Due to cube blades use of blade element theory, there was no conflict rate flow effect as well as the pre predictions becoming invalid with the own set of stall of the blade. Thus, the main benefit of cube blade was for us to get a good first approximation to the lifting accuracy of the blade as well as ensuring the blade was optimized with a tip speed ratio of 4 and which we desire. It was a crude approximation to the power output of the blade and was used as a means of ensuring a lot of our lenders were in the right ballpark and, made, and which made sense graphically in America. Ultimately, the structural integrity of our blade design was maintained and no material failure occurred, making the project a success. Our blade achieved a max power output of 23.4 watts for a wind speed of 12 meters per second. This led to a CP max normalized by the blade length of 0.17. From comparing the inflection points of the curves, we could deduce that there was an exponential increase in CP max against wind speed, with CP max occurring near the stall of the blade. The angular velocity of our blade at its peak power output was 2,902 RPM, resulting in a TSR of 5.05, .05, an 11% difference to our theoretical predictions. We unfortunately were unable to run the test at a wind speed of 6 meters per second, and so no power readings were taken. This was mainly due to the drag on the blade being too significant, a design fault which could have been mitigated by reducing the connecting area between the blade and the spinner coat, using the minimum area required to maintain a structural integrity. The drag could also have been reduced by incorporating a better designed wing tip, such as rounding off the ends or implementing a winglet had more intensive research been carried out. Comparing the power generated by our blade to a modern day application, we found that if approximately 1,200 of our blades were operating at a wind speed of 12 meters per second for the duration of one hour, we could theoretically charge the battery for a Formula E car for its stint in a race.